Hey everyone, welcome to the series on reselling while pursuing financial independence. This is a monthly series where we talk with, uh, you know, just regular resellers who are happening or who happen to also pursue financial independence. We talk about financial topics and things like that. We are going to learn from the Cha-Ching King today, Scott, <laughs> and we're going to talk about what financial independence means to him and kind of his strategies on his financial, you know, goings and, and whatnot. We're so glad you could join us. And if you are watching live, we are so excited that you're here. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. Um, like I said, today we have Scott the Cha-Ching King. Everyone knows him. <laughs> everyone loves him. And we're just going to start off with some fun icebreakers right now. So first of all, I wanted to ask you, if you won the lottery, would you choose the lump sum option? Or let's say it's about 500000 Would you choose the lump sum or payments over time? I, I take the lump sum, roll as much of it in, as I can into um, annuities that are tax sheltered, and then I'm the one in control of it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So which one would you rather, cooking at home or going out? Uh, cooking at home. Oh, Yeah. Oh yeah. So who does the cooking between Me. you and oh yeah. <laughs> really? nice yeah, out of self-defense. <laughs> self-defense. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> I I cook for the both of us um a lot too. So don't worry about are, that. Are you there. afraid of her? Is that what it is? Well sometimes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not usually exactly. in the kitchen, she, I don't think. She's the boss, you know. <laughs> okay, so would you um would when it comes to kind of strategies, whether it be investing or reselling, low risk, steady returns, or high risk, you know, big potential? For for reselling or for investments? Either or. Or if you have a philosophy for philosophy for both, different philosophy, then I, I kinda I think I think my philosophy spills over into both. I'm 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 about managed risk. And so like with reselling, um I swing for the fences, but I don't do so blindly. Hmm. I, I try to educate myself enough to where I'm competitive. And, uh, you know, as far as investment goes, that, you know, I mean, it's just slow and steady wins every single time. Nice. Like, get rich quick is the same as stay poor slow. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Very That's good. That's a great line. I love that. Okay, so would you rather have free travel for one year or free lodging for two years? Pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I like to drive, so I guess I take the lodging. Oh, uh, very you know, cool. I, I can get there. So yeah, we yeah. we are definitely in the boat of of flying because we love to travel, and so yeah. you know whether it be using credit card points to fly or or lodging, I think we could make uh, use of either one. But that's so interesting. I think. Uh, the few people we've asked, you're the first to say lodging. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I feel like I got it wrong. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is this is all personal <laughs> icebreakers. Okay, so would you do a vacation or staycation if you had the choice? Pretty much at any time of the year. Oh, I, we like to go, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so I mean, while I love our house, um, the opportunity to get out and go see what's at the end of the road is something we've done ever since our first dates. And so we still do that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So which would you rather big flips or quick flips? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like the big ones that sell right now, but yeah. I, I am not against sitting on something long-term while I wait for the right buyer. Okay. Fair enough. That's great. Well, that's great. Well, we've gotten a little bit got to pick your brain a little bit. We're going to go ahead and say hi to a few people who are here. eBay addicts, of course. Jeff, yeah. hey. We've got Becca. Hey, Becca. And we've got the Hoogs, the Hoogs. Desiree and Connor, of course. Christy, Mom's Closet, another Texan, fellow Texan. Yes. All right. We've got Marcus, Dixon's Pickens. Hey, Marcus. Hey, Marcus. Lodging. Lodging. Okay, Christy. Christy is in the same yeah, boat as you. Yeah, she's with you. She's with you there. And Josh, the garbage monster. Okay, we've got a new person here, Lucky Seven Auction. Thanks so much for checking us out. 
All right, Scott. Why don't All you right. why don't you tell us a little bit about your your journey with regard to well, I've heard it, but hopefully you can kind of recap your journey with your superintendent role, how you kind of got into eBay and mm -hmm. you know what got you started really thinking about eBay, your finances and and that whole thing that made made us want to reach out to you and talk about you know just the importance of of getting serious with your money. I think that because um, you know, I'm never even sure where to start the story. Um, I grew up without any financial sense of any kind of as far as how to handle finance. Mm -hmm. And I grew into adulthood without any idea how to how to manage things. So my object, um, uh, my objective was always to just make more than everybody else. And so I pursued that and I was good at it and I, I made good money and it was uh, October 12, 2012. Uh, we had been doing eBay for a long time, but not seriously. And I came home for lunch one day and keep in mind, I'm a superintendent. I'm making six figures. I'm in control of everything except my own finances. And I get mm. home and the lights are off. And in the little town we live in, I was like, well, that's, that's par for the course, except that everybody else's lights weren't off just hmm. mine. And, uh, it was at that point when Melody and I sat down and we're looking at everything. I'm like, how can I make $130,000 a year? And I don't have power. Like wow. there's something wrong here. And mm -hmm. we were, I thought our whole life we'd been living the American dream and we weren't, we were borrowing the American dream. Mm. We it didn't belong to me. And, uh, we changed everything that day. And mm -hmm. so no car payments, no consumer debt, no credit cards. Um, and eBay played a big role in that. You know, we listened to, to Dave Ramsey. He's like, sell everything till your kid says or thinks they're next. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and we started selling stuff and it created a little bit of additional income. And, and again, mine was never, the income was never the problem. Mm -hmm. It was never the problem. I, I made from the time that I was an adult, I made a lot. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. but we were just broke at a different level. So mm -hmm. we changed everything and, and took control of our finances and, and life is just so much easier and better. Yeah. So, wow. Did that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. And, and I do have a follow-up question, but I think that's just so interesting mm -hmm. how, um, you know, sometimes people lose sight of, of their expenses and they don't know how they got there. And so I guess my my question is, do you know, kind of looking back, do you know how you got there? Was it kind of just lifestyle inflation where you, you at, at the more you made, the more you spent? Um, kind of talk to us about the mindset that you had. Um, I don't have I, have we have you and I talked at any point about my childhood? No, you don't have to if it, yeah, it's uncomfortable. No, subject it's not going to bother me at all. Like I used to tell mm -hmm. the kids at the school because. Uh, you know, if you use excuses for where you're at, eventually that's all you've got left are excuses. Mm. And so, uh, no, I grew up in poverty. Um, uh, okay. It, it's a long story, but my dad escaped from a federal penitentiary and he bought my mom from her parents and I grew up homeless in most of my childhood on the run. So, oh, wow. um, I went to a ton of different elementary schools and, um, moved out as soon as I could. And I thought the way to, to, to look like you were middle class. I borrowed money and mm -hmm. I had absolutely no clue what middle class looked like, felt like, had no idea whatsoever. So I was always trying to put on, to try and look like the level that I wanted to be at. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I was teaching, I made sure I had a new car and I, you know, the right clothes and, and, and so, you know, debt will absolutely crush your income um, because mm -hmm. you you get no compound interest. You're not ever making money on your money. You're just mm -hmm. living paycheck to paycheck, regardless of the size of the check. Right. Mm -hmm. And it took a long time for me to figure out it didn't have to be that way. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that resonates with me because, you know, in in a somewhat of a similar situation, I immigrated from Vietnam with my family and we had next to nothing. Uh, uh, you know, aside from family support and all that, we we very much came from poverty as well. And to see you come out of that um, is so encouraging because I feel like you know we have we have you know started making something of ourselves as well. And you know, 
20 some odd years after I've immigrated, you know, I've, I've adapted and, and, you know, gotten jobs and, and really made something out of it. And so that resonates with me because um, when you come from nothing and, uh, and now you have something after working, that is very inspiring. And so that that's a very inspiring story. So thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really, hopefully people resonate with that because, you know, you don't have to have a whole lot to make something out of, out of nothing. Right. And so um, mm -hmm. we really appreciate you sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We used to talk about it, you know, as a superintendent in a small school, you know, I work directly with the kids and Penelope is a, is an impoverished area. I mean, the kids are poor mm -hmm. and I'm like, but that can't be a reason for failure. It mm -hmm. can't be a reason that you don't succeed or it will be the reason you didn't succeed. And there's ways out and eBay's a great one online sales, all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. can help, but you right. have to find a way. And if you don't, the society won't care. <laughs> right. Well, I love that. That That's a great segue. Um, let's talk about eBay and the opportunities there. And, and I would love to know what made you want to make that transition, right? You, you have this great uh, superintendent job, or maybe it isn't so great. I, I don't know no, the situation. <laughs> okay. The, but um, kind of what was the catalyst in, in, just having you make that big jump, that big leap. So, you know, for us, um, I, I, I went into education way back and, and loved teaching, loved the kids. And immediately everybody assumed I was going to be an administrator. So I wound up an administrator. And again, at that time, I needed to make more money just because that was the goal. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of the reasons I stayed in Penelope. It was a small school. I still got to work with kids. Uh, but as a superintendent, I, I worked maybe 70 hours a week, 80 hours a week. Wow. Um, but wow. you were never off, like mm -hmm. never off. If it's snowing, you're outside checking the weather to make sure school can start. And, and if a kid needs you, you drop what you're doing and, and, and you, you help. And so we're getting uh, older, but you know, my parents, uh, my dad passed away uh, quite a while ago, but my mom's getting older and my wife's parents are getting older. And, I had zero control of my time, mm. none. I had no control over my time. And so part of it was that part of it was the guy that was following me, um, was really good. I mean, he's good for kids. And I, I thought that he would be a great replacement and I had invested so much. I didn't want to see the kids not have mm. something solid behind me and, uh, the timing worked out. And so we decided to build up uh, our eBay business and, of course, now I make more than I did as a superintendent. So wow, yeah, amazing. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, now, you talked about the freedom of time. That resonates with us because mm -hmm. that's what the financial independence community really kind of shouts at the top of the mountains. You know, it's like the, it's not really about money; it's about yeah. buying your time back, right? Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that and why that was so important and why that's important for your future? Yeah, it's it's. Well, first of all, the time is ticking constantly. Yeah. And so, you know, it was just like a breath ago that Melody and I started dating like mm -hmm. that quick. And then you find yourself this many years later and, you know, my dad's gone. Our parents are older. Melody's dad has had a stroke. We helped take care of him. And like at the school, I loved the kids. So like I didn't leave because I didn't like it. It's that I couldn't choose to come down there to see you guys. Mm -hmm. and bring you something because it wasn't an option mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I couldn't travel. I couldn't go spend time with Melody or my son or, or our parents. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, even if you're doing what you love, there's a cost for everything. And, right. mm -hmm. and the sacrifice for me was all of my time, all of my mm -hmm. time. It cost you as a superintendent, it cost all of your time. Like mm -hmm. if you're awake, you're, you're working either physically or mentally. Mm -hmm. And now like I get to choose what I do with my time. And that was intoxicating. There's the thought of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. do you, do you ever feel like eBay has, has kind of taken some of that or have you found a very good um, line in the sand where you say, if I want to do something else besides eBay, I will drop what I'm doing and I'll just go on a road trip with Melody and or, or whatever. Have you found that good balance? 
Oh yeah, no, no question at all. Like, first of all, we do eBay for fun, so okay, we enjoy what we're doing. So it's not, uh, it's not as much of a time suck as as it might appear. Mm -hmm. But because we have leveled up our average sale price so much over the last three years, that we still we make enough. Like, we make enough <laughs> money. So if I want to shut it off for a few days and 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 drive west or north or <laughs> There's not very many places to go south, but I, <laughs> yeah. uh, we can and we do. So, nice. yeah. So it's is it, it's much easier to balance than what I had before. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say to to everyone else that's listening? Like when when you're trying to build up a store like eBay or anything like that, what would you say that? Or maybe pull from your experience. What would you never compromise on when it comes to trying to balance it? Like you, you know, someone's hustling so hard they they really want to uh, build up their store to a thousand listings like us, but they're they're just grinding so hard. Um, in your experience, what would you tell them and say you should never compromise on this particular thing or or anything related to that? I think the first thing you need to do is if you're running a business, you need to decide what do you want to get out of it? If, uh, if, if I'm 20 years old and I, I don't have anything to fall back on, man, it's a lot of, it's going to be income driven. I need to build enough so that I have some financial security there. Um, but you have to decide what your goals are. If you decide like for us, we, we, it's just a few things. We want, uh, freedom of time. Mm -hmm. We want enough money to survive. Otherwise there is, you don't really have a whole lot of freedom right. and we wanted enough to give away. And so mm -hmm. I'm not going to compromise those things. And so I, I, this contributes to us for a more relaxed life. Uh, uh, um, and I don't want employees. I don't need to ramp up to a mm -hmm. million dollars a year. I'm not trying to catch you or, or, I mean, nobody can catch the hoogs, but I mean, we're not trying to, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. And, you know, my goal is for Melody and I to meet our goals and those mm -hmm. things that work for us. And I'm not willing to compromise that. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Having defined, you know, values and having defined goals and not being swayed by, you know, other people's goals. I think it kind of fits into that. It's that same mentality. Like you were saying earlier in life, you were looking at, you know, what kind of cars other people had, what kind of clothes other people had. And I think within the reselling community, entrepreneurship, you know, you can get it, you can fall into that sort of same trap where you're looking at Absolutely. other people's goals, other people's businesses, and you're just trying mm -hmm. to imitate them instead of seeing what your own values are. Yeah. That's and that exactly makes it right. That, it's so hard with all the social media yeah. and stuff like that. I just hope that people are, you know, finding the balance with social media, using it as inspiration, not as a comparison, because that's exactly it always true. floats in my mind. The the quote that mm -hmm. that, um, you know, comparison is a thief of joy. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know oh, that's if good. that I, resonates yeah. with you at all, but it really is. It, the the first time I, that I heard it, I was like, wow, that that is so true. Yeah, mm -hmm. very true. You know, I, and I try to put that on there, you know, because occasionally I'll post numbers. Um, mm -hmm. The numbers in and of themselves don't mean anything. Like mm -hmm. I can put that I made, you know, $14,000 in a month. Well, what does that mean? It, mm -hmm. Did I spend $15,000 on inventory? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like the number in and of itself doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. uh, what I try to tell everybody is it needs to be encouragement. If you, if you're watching me and you're like, oh man, look at that guy. If he can do that, anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want them to realize that there is, there is zero special about me. And so the things that we're doing, they can do. And it's mm -hmm. just uh, um, how big the stack is and all of that kind of stuff. I, I've posted the big stack before, but I've always, so I did a wide angle shot one time of one package. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was our yeah. It still works for us. And that's mm -hmm. really the only thing that matters. I'm not trying to chase somebody who's trying to build an empire. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. need an empire. Right. right. Well, first exactly. of all, I think you give yourself too little credit and you're so humble. Uh, second of all, I do want to say that I, I just love the in all of your social media, whether it be Instagram or your YouTube, you, you have a level of humor that you bring to the community that I think everyone can appreciate. Right. You don't take yourself too seriously. And mm -hmm. hopefully everyone can resonate with that in a way, because 
it is supposed to be fun, right? This community is all about buying low and selling high and having fun with it. I don't mm-hmm. know that there's there should be people who take things too seriously, but uh, mm-hmm. we've come across some people too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a, uh, well, I won't go into to an ugly story, but I've definitely run into some people that they think being competitive means that you have to be aggressive. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, arrogantly, I rarely lose, but it mm-hmm. isn't because I'm going to stand on top of somebody else to get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't think you're ever ahead if you're standing on other people to get there. So I think the more people you take with you, that's true success is, is if I can, mm-hmm. whether it was when I was in the classroom, if I can get the kids to believe in themselves, I don't need them to believe in me. I need them to believe in themselves. And mm-hmm. if somebody takes the time to actually watch my channel or, or visit with me on Instagram, my goal is for them to believe that they can. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't need them for me. Cause like, mm-hmm. I, I, I really want to help in the end. It, it, I want it to matter that I was here mm-hmm. and, and like now that's a part of this community. This community has accepted me, which just blows me away, but it needs to matter that I was here. Otherwise, what was the point in showing up? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 That's so true. So it sounds like you take that philosophy in, in pretty much all the social media that we follow where, you're, you're always creating content that is trying to help someone. One of your most m- more recent ones is, you know, the, the types of way to source and, and all like that. Mm-hmm. What, what gives you the inspiration to do that? And, you know, is it is it to just put it out there or do you feel like you have a particular spin on it that other people haven't considered? Kind of take us through that mindset. You mean like the educational uh, yeah, videos? The like mm-hmm. that? Well, part of it is, I mean, I, I, I really do love teaching. And oh, yeah. the, the kids that I taught elementary school and the kids that I taught are all in their mid thirties now. Mm-hmm. And so, and I talked to almost all of them. And so a lot of them are interested. And so some of it started from Facebook that, that those, those kids, <laughs> they wanted mm-hmm. to know, uh, you know, um, the younger generation is very, very intent on having multiple streams of income. Yeah. And, and so, I also have some family that's interested in it. And so if I can create a video that's actually helpful for somebody that's afraid to start, because really there's very little that stops you from doing these things other than the fear of I'm going to mess up or this is going to happen or that's going to happen. And if I can remove those barriers, then they will be successful on their own without me and past me. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had uh, many fears in your eBay experience? Because this might come up um, for us because Camilla is reselling full time now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, before you made the leap, or you know, now that you're full time, now that you have been full time, have you ever been worried that something's going to happen to eBay, or, or how do you kind of work through that if you have any mm-hmm. fears like that? Um, fear is is probably not the right word. It's a uh, um, I will never put all of my eggs in one basket. Mm. Um, it's the reason I made Instagram because I had heard people could sell on Instagram. And I thought, well, if eBay dies, I'll sell stuff on Instagram. And I, mean, I don't <laughs> I don't know if I've ever sold anything on Instagram. Um, but I also have Poshmark. I have Etsy. We've used Facebook Marketplace a little bit. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So it's more about insulation from the cold outside than it is fear. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's, I've, I've been poor <laughs> and I'm not going back. <laughs> right. Right. So, but yeah, that's not, motivation. <laughs> yeah. It's not so much fear as it is yeah, intention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, for, for us, we try to live just off of my salary. So, so mm-hmm. that makes sense to us that you, what you said about trying to diversify is mm-hmm. that Camilla uh, wants to do this for flexibility reasons as well, mm-hmm. but you know, we want to diversify, try to have this YouTube channel thing as well. And, you know, that, that makes so much sense. Hopefully, I, well, I think most people in this reselling community understand that, uh, especially with cross-listing and whatnot. Well, mm-hmm. by the way, how, how big or well, what percentage of your entire business is eBay specifically? Um, I would say probably 80%, 90%, most oh, of it. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I have the other platforms, but they are, again, I would focus intently on those if something happened on ebay and i couldn't mm-hmm. list mm-hmm. and i yeah. couldn't sell uh, the others would get much bigger much faster but um ebay is the, it's the it's the fastest horse in the race so 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's our biggest by far as well. I think we I have. I think it's like, about 50% yeah. of our overall business. At least. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. But yeah. Um, let's say we're going to say hi to some people in the chat. We've, you know, let the chat go on for a little while. So <laughs> hi, Annie. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. And hi, Aubrey. Welcome. Thanks for subscribing. Hi from Florida. You're talking with some Texans here. <laughs> and Jen is here. Hi, Jen. Hey, Jen. How's it going? And Storage Bandits. Hi. How's it going? And they say, everyone hit the thumbs up. That's right. Hit the thumbs up. And We've got Van, Van Jam, Jam is here. here. Oh, hey, my Jam. gosh. Welcome. We Thanks got Rachel coming. Strickland. Wow. Wow. We have been, <laughs> yeah, right. we're really behind on the chat. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> wow. Hey, we got Amber over at Outcountry Sales. So many awesome. great people here. Oh, wait. Yeah. The Vintage Viking. Hey. Arbitrage with Amber. Hi, Amber. Awesome. And we got Drew here as well. That's wow. awesome. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. Um, I, I do want to kind of switch the the subject here to more finance related things because I think that everyone in the reselling community has a financial mind where financial independence is kind of an you know kind of a tangent to reselling almost they want the freedom of time they want the flexibility we all kind of want that and that's what financial independence is to us but you can't do it forever and so Mm -hmm. when I say that you know 10 20 30 years down the line when you can't pull boxes to do inventory and you don't really want to have an employee and you kind of want to, you know, just get rid of it all and retire. Do you have <laughs> a plan for that, Scott? And, and yeah. if so, I'd, I'd, we'd love to hear kind of what you're, what you're planning. Mm-hmm. Well, keep in mind, I started planning for the retirement phase back in 91. Okay. So like I was still doing everything else wrong, but as far as retirement goes, like I have a lifetime income because I retired as a superintendent. Wow. And so uh, like, uh, and it was, I, I, it was, I had enough security with the other things that I'm actually the, my, that retirement will go to my son for the rest of his life. It's not Maybe. a ton of money, but I still think that my retirement is probably more than uh, an average income at this point. Mm-hmm. And so right now we use that primarily for, the bulk of things eBay um, goes into paying off. I'm, I'm not quite done with the house yet. So mm-hmm. um, I, I, honestly, I, I think if I chose to like change my lifestyle, I could quit today. Wow. But I mean, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, but the reality of it is, is I started planning a long time ago to make sure that there was money put up. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with the, the daily money we were spending. Wow. But mm-hmm. I paid myself first. Oh, way back. we love that. Yeah. That, that uh, comes. Well, I've heard it through the book, the richest man in Babylon, where you want to pay yourself first. And so yeah. that is so important. And um, I had, the follow-up question that I had was, um, do you con- concurrently still invest? So into your retirement, whether it be like individual retirement accounts or, or anything else? Mm -hmm. I still have other retirement accounts. The bulk of my money right now is going to paying off the house. So, um, yeah, it'll feel so good when, when that's paid off, huh? Yeah. And it's not, I mean, we're, we're close, like we're close. And so then because I have enough money saved to where, I mean, I'm not going to wind up homeless again. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're planning on spending our money on us. We're mm-hmm. planning on traveling and doing mm-hmm. some of those kind of things. And honestly, mm-hmm. it would, I mean, we give away a lot. I don't give away cash, but right. mm-hmm. I help everybody that, that I'm able to help. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think about um, like 10 or 20 years down the line? Do you, do you find yourself um, thinking that far with this re- eBay stuff where you say, Oh, well, probably when I'm 70 or 80 or something where I just can't stop, can't uh, pull boxes anymore. <laughs> you ever think about that or you're, you're taking it one year at a time? No, 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 no. I absolutely have a plan for that as well. So we recently branched out um, into like antique stamps, postcards, things like that that don't weigh much. 
um, and, and, you know, trying to learn as much about that as possible because I still enjoy the game. I still yeah. mm -hmm. enjoy going out and looking for things. And there are plenty of lightweight things that you could source and list and sell that would mm -hmm. still have you doing it without having to pick up a tub of, you know, weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's so true. But I think that's a good mindset to have because I think, um, for a lot of people within the financial independence community, um, it can kind of be like you get into this mode of you're saving, you're investing so much that then it can be hard to switch once you like mm -hmm. have enough to be actually financial and in, financially independent to switch to the spending part mm -hmm. of things. Right. And then you end up still kind of being on this like, you know, restriction sort of lifestyle. But yeah. Um, to recognize when enough is enough and then to say like, okay, well, this money that is coming in, I can, I can spend it um, and to be able to give it away as well. I think, you know, for us, that's really important. That's a, a really important part of our finances. That's a big, you know, for our budget, that's a big budgetary part of our, you know, month to month, what we look at. Right. Um, but I think really it's about, you know, finding that abundance in your finances as well, mm -hmm. not just independence, but abundance really. And, yeah. and I think that part of that comes from the creation of abundance and, and not necessarily more money. It, uh, mm -hmm. more money is not a solution. More money is a band aid, but if you're doing the same things that created a problem, you're still going to have a problem. You'll just have it at a different income level. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, a big part of what it is, 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 we're not doing the things that keep us from being able to give and that mm -hmm. kept me from being able to leave the school, you know, cause mm -hmm. the, the reality of it is, is that while I make more now than I would have as the superintendent here in Penelope, but if I left and went to a different superintendent job, you know, a quarter of a million is middle of the road. I mean, I could have picked that up easily. And mm -hmm. so, but it would just be more money. And right. so mm -hmm. I adjust my lifestyle I can have the the time to do whatever I, I would like to do. I have plenty to give away. I still need to make money, mm -hmm. um, but it's metered. I mean, I, I control mm -hmm. how much of this I want to do. You know, long term, I, I eventually would like to, to make money on YouTube. I would like to make tons of money on eBay, but I am not going to be one of the people that dies a millionaire. Like... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to skid across the, the plate broke, <laughs> but, <Yeah. right. laughs> but I'm, I'm not the type of person that's ever going to accumulate millions and millions of dollars in wealth mm -hmm. um, because I would spread it out before that time. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So even in the in the days of you transitioning kind of into the Dave Ramsey mindset, going mm -hmm. from, you know no lights on to, to saying, <laughs> Oh, we've got to change something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you always have that where, cause, cause I think that's part of what the Dave Ramsey kind of financial peace university is part of, or mm -hmm. it has that mindset, right? You continue to give uh, along mm -hmm. uh, um, while you're, you know, tackling debt. Isn't that right? Yeah. You know, for, I got there before Melody did like, she mm -hmm. was still like, you know, it wasn't a big day to spend 10 bucks a day. It wasn't a big deal to spend $10 a day at Starbucks. And I'm like, well, that's 400 a month. <laughs> like mm -hmm. wow. more yeah. than the electric that isn't on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, it took her more, uh, time than it took me. And as you know, you're married, you have to be on the same page. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and until you're on the same page, it's, it's, it's whatever it is, it's more of a struggle. Right. And, right. uh, so that day though, was a, that one she got on the same page and uh for we haven't done like dave ramsey straight through we've okay. uh, we've modified it to meet our needs uh, mm -hmm. melody doesn't talk to people my son doesn't talk to people so having cash mm -hmm. where you're going to go into the store and do it yeah that's never going to happen they would mm -hmm. run out of gas first and call me to come fix it so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that said um we definitely uh debt did not work for us Mm -hmm. uh, we were not the type of people that had any idea how to make that be profitable for us. For us, it was a major, major problem. So we just don't do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kudos to those people that can. It doesn't mm -hmm. work for us. So I haven't borrowed as much as a soda. I don't even have a credit card. I haven't had oh, a wow. credit card in forever. And 
I know people save miles and all of that stuff. I just, but I have enough to go wherever I want to go. And, and if I, I, I feel like at this point, it'd be almost like just an alcoholic thinking I can just have a few sips. Mm -hmm. be okay. So we just right. don't do it. No, that's so fair because mm -hmm. personal finance is personal. You know, I, mm -hmm. I love hearing, yeah, mm -hmm. I love hearing stories about other people managing their money because mm -hmm. it gives us ideas about how we might want to change our mindset, yeah. first of all, or change our habits. You know, it's so mm -hmm. important to hear so many other perspectives to hit, mm -hmm. you know, right for someone where they are, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's not that we are trying to, um, you know, give advice from on high. It's like, we want to meet you where you are and if there's something that we we say that resonates with you know someone in the chat or someone watching um then that's great and mm -hmm. hopefully uh, our even though our you know strategy is different than yours mm -hmm. scott that um that might mm -hmm. help someone who just doesn't want to touch credit cards either you know mm -hmm. that's so important for other people to hear yeah well and i think that's a, a big part of it is that you know you still have to do what works for you and, mm -hmm. so, and whether you're talking about finance or your eBay business or mm -hmm. whatever it is you're doing, it has to work for you. It doesn't, what yeah. you're doing doesn't have to work for me. I think mm -hmm. that when it comes to personal finance, the, the real key is that it has to work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so there has to be, if you're not in control of it, somebody is. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and somebody is going to be deciding what happens to your dollars if you're not the one deciding. And so for us, I mean, we're in complete control at this point and it doesn't look mm -hmm. exactly like Dave Ramsey and it doesn't look uh, like anybody, you know, there's a ton of people that um, really truly benefit from having credit that they use, but I'm just not mm -hmm. one of them. And so I'm very, very close to owing like nothing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be such a good feeling. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you let us know so yeah. we can celebrate with you because yeah. I, I think that there is a certain level of freedom there, you know, whether it be financial freedom or there's just a, a freedom of knowing that you don't owe anybody anything. Mm -hmm. It's just, that would yeah, be amazing no. to hear from you about, you know, when yeah. that happens. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not the time, I'm not going to do a, a scream or anything. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say the debt free yeah, scream. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, let us know on Instagram. Yeah. We'll celebrate with I you. You know, I honestly <laughs> don't know that for us, it will have a, it will be a big change because mm -hmm. The, the whole idea behind it is that you you are in control because mm -hmm. once you have control, really the rest of it's just a timing thing. So mm -hmm. we're in complete control of our finances. So whether whatever day that box is checked off, I'm in control today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's the key is when you feel like that you're the one who decides and that you really do have control. That's the free part. That's, yeah. that's where you break free. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's, uh, well, let's take a quick break and say hi to some people. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome. So glad you could make it. Let's see. Don't scroll too fast. You might miss some people. <laughs> oh, by the <laughs> way, way if, behind. if you have any questions <laughs> for Scott, yeah. please, please chat them in the chat. We're, we're going to try to, <laughs> we're going to try to catch up with the yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bama picking and grinning. Hey, y'all. Hey. So okay, good. See. A lot of this chat is people talking with other people yeah, yeah. in the chat rather than addressing us. <laughs> oh, look. Okay, so I think the same way about alcoholic telling themselves that they can just have one drink. I can't just have one credit card because I'm scared I will just go back to bad habits. Mm -hmm. You know, that's such a valid thing yeah. where we think that a person that has kind of gotten out of control with credit cards mm -hmm. will then spiral out of control. That's it's so important to keep yourself in check. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Scott, to be in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to really know your personality and your money personality um, kind of fits into that. And so for some people, it is that kind of personality where, you know, the credit card is not, you know, the the avenue for you to be spending your money on. And that's just the reality of, you know, your identity or your, your personality, really. Yeah. And, and for us, it's honestly, it's, it was never a positive. And so mm -hmm. like, there hasn't been a negative for not having it for anything mm -hmm. that you think you can't do or anything like that. I don't, I don't need, I don't need any of it. I mean, 
I haven't I haven't missed it <laughs> at all. So mm -hmm. everything's been better for us. That, uh, to me, it's a lot. It really is a lot like alcohol. So mm -hmm. I I don't I don't drink, and so I don't miss mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so. Fair. Yeah. That that's fair. The vintage Viking says same here. I don't use credit cards at all, and it's freeing. That that's all yeah. important. That that's great to hear. That it's freeing. Mm -hmm. Jesse, hey Jesse. Hi, Jesse, welcome. Awesome. awesome. Okay, I think we're caught up now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, with regard to kind of the philosophy on on um, you know not using credit cards or just having control, what would you say to someone who's starting off with debt or you know, kind of trying to getting themselves out of a hole, whether they started with credit mm -hmm. card and they want to stop or whatever. What do you think uh, you would tell someone you know or or a close friend if, if they came to you and said, look, mm -hmm. I've, I've got an issue and you've got your finances together. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, I mean, I would tell them, gosh, I, you know, it depends upon the person, first of mm -hmm. all, and it depends upon whether or not um, I think that my own experience would have a positive impact on them for knowing it. Um, but I do think that I would tell them that, you know, the, the big, the big thing is you have to be the one in control and you, you better be deciding where your dollars are going and, and whether or not you're, they're working for you or you're working for them. And mm -hmm. so like when I worked for dollars, I was always broke. And once my dollars are working for me, I haven't been broke since. And so mm -hmm. my quest, my, my questions for them would be, you know, are there emotions attached to this? Are there things that are, mm -hmm. that are fueling? First of all, if they talk to me, then they're willing to listen to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you've got to figure out where it is. I mean, how big a hole are they in? Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm telling them, you know, I don't want to have to have you move to Bolivia, but that might be where you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, lower, your lower your expenses, the <laughs> lower cost of living, you know, get away from the debt. Yeah. <laughs> but as, as funny as that sounds, that is a way to escape it. Yeah. <laughs> Bolivia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not sure I fit in in Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think it, it comes back to kind of what you're saying about being in control of your finances is, you know, you want to be intentional about how you're spending your money, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really important to us that that we're not um, just spending our money, you know, and not thinking about where it's going, but that each dollar that we spend, each dollar that we give, each dollar that we invest, we're making consciously making that decision of that this aligns with what we want for our lives, you know, our values and what is important to us. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. And, and how old are y'all right now? 31. So I'm, yeah, I'm 26 and he's 31. Okay. So yeah. like I put uh $1,000 in an mm -hmm. annuity when I was 26. And mm -hmm. of course, during some of those years when I was broke, I would have took it out if they'd have let me, but you know, <laughs> yeah. that right. same money today, um, mm -hmm. I was 26. So what, 29 years later is like $16,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so like literally 16 times my money simply mm -hmm. because it was working and I, I, wasn't able to stop it from working. Mm -hmm. And and now of course I don't need to or want to. And <laughs> mm -hmm. so knowing where your dollars are at your age, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh man, what a freeing concept. Yeah. I mm -hmm. one of the things I love about your channel is that it that it isn't just the reselling, that you have this section that you talk about and you say, here's where we put some of this money mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. here's what it's doing for us. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to think that, yeah, but you could go get a car or you could go to, well, mm -hmm. and if you need that, great. But if you wait, mm -hmm. then you end up at this time where you have so much control. And, and mm -hmm. I think that what some people struggle with, they think that you, you don't have control in between because you're saving and it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like when you're saving, you have way more control. I, I get to do so much more now mm -hmm. even though we haven't tapped into any of this other money that we've put aside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. all about delayed gratification I, yeah. I, that's what that's what i get <clears throat> from what you had just said that we we try to put it in now so that we can enjoy it later and mm -hmm. i think that's lost on a, on a lot of people who um kind of live for the moment because we we try to balance that don't get us wrong we we we're not 
you know, kind of living on rice and beans. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we, we do try to balance it where we say, you know, we'll, we'll put this amount aside so that it can grow over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's huge. Huge. Yeah. So exactly. we've got a question from Annie. How long did it take for you to get where you were making an, enough money with reselling? So that begs the question, what is enough? And why don't you start us off, Scott? <laughs> okay, uh, Annie. Um, so my we started adjusting not how much we were making, but we started adjusting how much we were spending first. Mm-hmm. And we cut back to the things that were actually important to us. So at the school, like I say, um, it was well into the six figures that I was making. And at retirement, of course, I wasn't going to get 100% of my salary. Uh, in fact, it was going to be 62.1% of my salary is what it came to. Wow. And because I left it to my son, who will get it for the rest of his life, it was a smaller portion even than that. But still, because we had adjusted our cost of living, what I needed to do was only make up a certain percentage. And so when I first um, knew when I was going to retire, I was able to look at the date and say, this is when I qualify. Uh, we started ramping up eBay at that time and, and Melody started working a lot harder. Melody was listing every day and getting stuff done every day. And so it wasn't like I looked and thought, wow, I can do this today. I started almost three years before and said, on this date right here, I will qualify. What do we need to do to be ready then? How much do we need to make? At the time that Melody and I had that conversation, we were making about $30 a month on eBay. (laughs) And and I had told her, I said, you know, I really think we could get to a hundred dollars a day. And she's like, no, (laughs) anybody make that much. And, and of course, you know, we, we average closer to, it varies a lot Um, Mm -hmm. anywhere from around. And, but I mean, we have slower months because we take time off too. So, mm-hmm. uh, so Annie, it wasn't a matter of, I looked at the calendar and said, Hey, we just, we made it. We looked at it and thought we need to be making this much. Better. What do we need to do to make that happen? And then we did what it took in between. Once I retired, then Melody stepped back to spend more time with her parents who needed the help and over all she was doing. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, you, you had such a good plan. You know, you it sounded like you did it in stages as well, where you both really worked together on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of like I just heard this term yesterday. I was listening to a podcast about timelining your goals, where you set a date of when you want to achieve this goal and you, you know, set out the parameters of what it would mean to actually achieve that by that date. And it sounds like that's what you did. Um with your business. 100%. And- You're breaking up a little bit on me and I don't know if it's on my end, but, um, yes, for me, um, I think, I think again, it goes back to childhood, you know, that complete mm-hmm. lack of control then, mm-hmm. um, I'm, it's all about control. Now I want to be, uh, in control. And so mm-hmm. I'm, my screen just went completely black. Oh, and so yeah. it's, a- we still got you. Yeah. Okay. And so it's, it's just a matter of absolutely. I can, I can plan and I can work hard and, and I normally overshoot, you know, I plan over plan and, and, and overproduce. And so that if I fall short, I'm not homeless. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We take a pretty similar philosophy, right? Where for us, we, so to answer Annie's question kind of in our way, we, we know what we need to live on, right? We, we know our expenses and what is enough, uh, quote unquote, enough is, is what we need to live on. And so mm-hmm. we have looked at our entire budget and said, mm-hmm. these are our expenses and this is what we need. And outside of once, these are needs that we, mm-hmm. we should be producing enough to meet these mm-hmm. needs so that we can just live. And so, like like you said, Scott, not be homeless, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, essentially, that's the goal. Our, yeah, our mm-hmm. definition of enough really is, first of all, defining what our expenses are, mm-hmm. trying to break it all down so that we can then make a game plan of how much mm-hmm. do we need to make to mm-hmm. at least sustain that. And so, when it comes to reselling, though, mm-hmm. um, if we needed to fall on to reselling, that's how we gauge how many listings we need to do, how many, what sales we need to make, the average, 
costs mm -hmm. that we need to try to keep under so that we make a certain profit per item. Mm -hmm. And so all of those factors, all of those other factors are after we figured out what we need. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We, we have never um, run our business based on the number of listings. It has mm -hmm. always been the average sale price. Um, mm -hmm. my, my goal would be to list three to five items a day mm -hmm. and make a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are not For there. Sure. Uh, but yeah. uh, our average sale price last year was like 8250 And wow. my cost of goods has not gone up. Or mm -hmm. maybe a little bit, but I mean, marginally, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think I ever reached five dollars an item, wow. and so mm -hmm. the goal was really for me just to study. I am mm -hmm. not, I'm not aggressive enough to, to go push people out of the way, and and I'm, mm -hmm. I, I would never pull something out of somebody else's hands. I mm -hmm. would put something in somebody else's hands first. Yeah. Uh, so the only weapon that I really have that would make me competitive is mm -hmm. I'm willing to study more than other people and I'm yeah. married to somebody really smart and that helps. And she has a, a group of things that she studies. And so when we go out, we find things other people missed because we've got a broad base of knowledge and, and, and we study a lot because we enjoy that part of it. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. She's the brains of this whole thing. I, I, I try to support her and in, in that yeah. too. So I, I think well, she married you. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but anyway, she, she's the brains. And I, I love that, that um, Melody is totally in this with you. You know, it, I just love reselling couples and yeah, mm -hmm. just in general mm -hmm. um, right here though, uh, Rachel, this is really good. Kind of in, in line where mm -hmm. she's debt free. And she and Drew are debt free outside of mortgage, no credit cards, all self employed, fear free. That must mm -hmm. be such a, just a, a wonderful feeling. You know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And hey, look, Zach's here. You sound bought and gone. Zach is here. And then uh, Nina, hi. Do either of you guys use the profit first method where you break up your earnings by a certain percentage? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the profit first method is. Yeah, I, I have know. listened to like, <laughs> okay, so I, I know that there's a book. I know that there's a profit first book. And I think I listened to like the first two chapters of it on audiobook. But I think maybe I didn't like the the narrator's voice. Like I'm really picky with audiobooks. <laughs> so I stopped listening to it. <laughs> but what we do, what we do for profit anyway, is um, we look at our net profit for each and every item. And so that's really what we're going off of in terms of, you know, when we're looking at, when we are conceptualizing how much we're making each month, how much we're making on each item, that sort of thing. We aren't necessarily looking at the sales price. We're looking at the profit mm -hmm. of it. Um, so we always take that into consideration with each of our items, but I don't know how that fits into the profit for first method. I don't know, if, <laughs> Scott, if you have anything to add about yeah. Like profit I got, I got and, and all that. <laughs> I don't. I don't yeah. know what that. I can tell you briefly what we do is, uh, you know, um, even at the school, like there were superintendents that knew a whole lot more about finance than I did, mm -hmm. a lot more. And uh, they they asked me one time. Um, I was supposed to give a speech. It was two thousand. I think it was two thousand thirteen. I was superintendent of the year for the uh, for the region. And I was supposed to talk about finance and I'm like, I just spend less than I get. And yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything complicated. I don't have any fancy words. So mm -hmm. what we do here, as far as we may, we have such a markup on the things that we find and what they're worth that I don't ever have to worry about the smaller percentage of the cost of goods for me is, is mm -hmm. negligible. And my guess is more important than the cost of goods. And then the rest of it, um, our costs of living aren't changing. And really the only thing that, uh, changes, I, I'm not even saving more. I'm, I'm paying off the house at a ridiculously fast rate, but the rest of it, I'm telling you, I'm giving it away and y'all think I'm kidding and I'm not. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what the profit first method that doesn't sound like me, but Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think I don't think that's yeah. us either. But yeah, I also I think from the first couple of chapters of the book, I think it was also more um, for like business owners and entrepreneurs who are growing their their business. And I feel like um, 
at least with us, we aren't necessarily thinking about, you know, scaling and growing so right. much. And I know that you have mentioned earlier in the live that that's not something that you're interested in either. So it's yeah. easier to, you know, focus on profits when you're not thinking, oh, I need to continue to invest and invest and invest to grow my business to, mm -hmm. you know, a million dollars right. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have, and I did say to her, I have no desire to be the boss. I, mm -hmm. I've been the boss and I worked with great people, but I've been there. I, I've mm -hmm. done that and, and, um, and I don't need to. And so mm -hmm. um, what I do is still a business. I, I pay taxes. So the government thinks it's a business right. and I mm -hmm. run it like a business. I treat customers mm -hmm. like customers. But what does Rachel say? Treat your business like your business. And yeah. I do, but my business isn't about trying to make a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have, I, I would probably buy a new truck if I made a million dollars. One that didn't say Tonka on it. I mean, like an actual truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the rest of it would, it would go to family and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I, I don't, I don't see me changing a whole lot. I mean, mm -hmm. hair plugs or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting better at that. So. Yeah, it, it, it uh, you really wanted to, we've, we've heard that there are some really good products out there, but they're pretty expensive. <laughs> you know, Evan here, he, he sold some, some pretty expensive ones. Mm -hmm. It's a polo. Yeah. But um, Joe, Joe over at Joe Dempsey sales is here. Hey, Joe. Hey. Danielle. Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Welcome. Of course, Evan. Flipping my flippers in. Israel says hi. Hair plugs. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we're we're going to start wrapping up here soon. But um, if you guys have any questions for Scott, please drop them in the comments before uh, we get going. But mm -hmm. I do want to wrap this up by kind of just asking all of these uh, questions we asked to all of our guests, kind of um, just what we call the final four. Okay. <laughs> and so, what what's your favorite i guess um if you have any financial books that you've read in the past that you think would benefit others or um, any podcasts or anything that people can consume that will help them in their financial journey do you have any of those that come i don't to know that it's definitely not a finance book um and and keep in mind i've already told you that everybody who did my job uh knew finance better than i did now keep in mind they were all broke uh and mm -hmm. my school was never broke um, but there's a book that I would recommend anybody who's trying to excel, whether it's at mm -hmm. finance or your business or in your marriage, anything. There's a book called Whale Done, W-H-A-L-E, Whale Done. Mm -hmm. And um, but, but basically, the and it's a super easy read, The uh, which is why I read it. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the premise of the book, this guy is about to get fired. And so he pretty much decides to use up his vacation time <laughs> and uh, he's uh, in charge of other people and he goes to like SeaWorld and he's watching this guy train a um, killer whale. And he's like, I can't get the people I work with to do anything. And you've <laughs> trained a killer whale who could eat you if things don't go well. <laughs> right. And uh, how do you do that? And so the premise of the book is, is about, you know, rewarding people for close approximations uh, uh, when they're moving in the direction that you want them to move in a different, a completely different type of leadership style. Well, leadership isn't just over other people. Leadership applies to so many things in your life and about how you approach things and how you run, uh, run things. And so well done is like uh, two days. If you can't sit still more than 15 minutes, it's a super <laughs> easy read, but the premise of it is powerful, really powerful. Wow. Excellent. Well, we'll have to check that one out. Yeah. Do you, are there any Rachel's comment? Yeah, yeah Rachel, Rachel says uh, there's a book called How to Stay Married Forever. That's pretty decent, too. Here, it's by a guy called Scott. You, you, you might know him. He's yeah. also known as the Cha-Ching King. See? It's a great book. Scott Kelly. There you go. That, that book was um, like... For a 25th anniversary, like I had nothing. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what she wants. And so I wrote 25 steps on how to stay married forever. And like literally none of them will work in anybody else's life. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was my anniversary gift for Melody. So, wow. and then she was like, you're going to buy something too, right? And I was like, yeah, 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 we're good. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Sandy says the four hour work week. We've, we've both read that one and mm -hmm. that one's a really good finance book as well. It's, it's also mm -hmm. a work related productivity related book. So mm -hmm. definitely check that out. 
Yeah. Okay, so was there one specific reseller, social media, YouTube, Instagram account that you, you know, saw when you first were starting that helped you, you know, get started on eBay or learn a lot? Um, you know, I had done eBay a long time before I even knew that it was a thing on YouTube. I had no clue mm -hmm. anybody was doing it. Melody found it first and um, you know, she she had several that she was wa uh, watching and uh, you know, the first time that I watched it, I sent uh, Ryan Roots a note. I was like, oh, oh yeah. Instagram, and he responded. And and so, like, you know, he had a big impact on me because I didn't realize, first of all, the people that are doing YouTube and they've got, you know, 100,000 followers, how many messages they get. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They're varied. And and I, I was in uh, Josh's the other day and there were 3,000 comments. And I'm like... <laughs> You can't do that. You can't talk to all those people. And right. so um, we followed him in part because he was so personable and he took the time to like answer my questions, even though, you know, as far as the business part of it goes, I, I was, we were doing okay, but I didn't know there was a social media aspect to this at all. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say, I, I'm surprised I'm on this channel with you guys. And I, <laughs> I can't believe I have a YouTube at all because I, I, I didn't know that social media, I, I, I didn't understand it. Uh, I certainly didn't see it as a, a vehicle. Um, but, um, you know, Melody liked Nicole state and that was the mm -hmm. first one we ever saw. Like mm -hmm. she was talking about eBay and I was like, there's somebody on TV. talking about <laughs> eBay. Like, this is insane. like I couldn't believe it. And so we watch, uh, we watched all of them. I think, I think we watched mm -hmm. them all. And, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. We finished the internet, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. Any Darth says dare to lead by Brene Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Brene Brown is, is a great content creator in general. She's very inspiring. Mm -hmm. So definitely check that yeah. out too. Leadership. A fellow Texan. Yeah. Another Texan. Yeah. I think she works out of the university of Houston too. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Elle and Michelle. Hey. Hey, welcome. Welcome. Danielle says she has a similar story. She wishes that she would have known about all the social media stuff on earlier. <laughs> well, then she wasn't on Instagram, was she? Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming, Danielle. Yeah. Well, yeah, now you've got 11,000 followers on Instagram. So you're doing something right, Scott. Yeah. You know, you, you jumped right into the... You jumped right into the the pool of all of the resellers in mm -hmm. the community, and you've done great for yourself. Yeah, I think there's just a lack of dad jokes, and so <laughs> like, because you know, like, I I uh, it was actually one of my teachers one time, and I think I had like five thousand followers or something. She said you're an influencer, and I was like, what? I don't even know what that is. And she explained it to me, and I was like, no, I'm not. That sounds like Kanye West or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm. Scott South here, like there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll help you fill in that that uh, dad joke because I'm now qualified. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Congratulations <laughs> to you guys. Thank you. Okay, so two more questions. What has been your favorite thing or category to resell? Like, you you know, you can either tell us a category or like the most memorable thing or the highest dollar item, whatever mm -hmm. that might be. <sighs> It, it, I don't know that it would be the highest dollar. Um, I, it's, I'm going to tell the story, and I don't know that I've ever told it publicly, so uh, I don't want anybody to think less of me. Uh, <laughs> I was at the Goodwill bins one time, and this guy, super aggressive guy, started yelling at Melody. And oh, no. I don't, y'all don't know Melody, but she's like the nicest person ever. Like, mm -hmm. she's super nice. And uh, I got mad, and I walked off. And he ended up confronting me and like, I just wanted to fight me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like five foot eight, like <laughs> four and 30. I don't know where you think this is going to go. And he was cussing me out. And I finally said, you know, you sound like a seventh grader who just learned a bunch of bad words. And anyway, so, which brings me to this part. So at our bins, he's, he's a know-it-all. He tells everybody everything. And there was a jacket there one day. I showed up and I'm, I'm going through the bins and uh, I pulled this M65 jacket out. M65 is a military jacket 
and but it's got a weird pattern on it and it's one i don't recognize but i i can tell by looking at it that it's vintage and i know exactly what model number it is because i've i've had them and and i've studied mm -hmm. and uh, several people said no this guy has already told everybody it's fake and it's not real and I was like, well, I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying it for sure now. <laughs> and so I get home, I do some research and it did take a while to figure it out. It uh, was something called the Mitchell pattern, uh, which was never put into production. The Japanese made some for the uh, American military during Vietnam mm. and as samples, but it never got adopted. And uh, so I put it on auction and it sold for $1,265. Wow. And, oh and so... Gosh. I made sure I told not, I don't talk to this guy cause I don't, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not aggressive at all. Right. But I did my best to make sure he knew. So I, there, I don't know how many people <laughs> are even in the chat. Now they're thinking that guy's a jerk. Like, <laughs> no, enjoyed, that's sweet. Just is. I enjoyed being right way more than I enjoyed how much it sold for. <laughs> so, like, I don't know what that says about me, but it says something. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's brought a lot of joy to us. That's such a fun story. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully everyone's laughing with yeah. us. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm just looking to see if anybody says anything that he pulled a Will Smith <laughs> on me or anything. But yeah. <laughs> okay, well, this has been great. The last question is, you know, where can people find you? You know, mm -hmm. um, plug your Instagram and your YouTube or whatever other social media people can follow you at. I, um, Facebook is never been uh, part of the business because I have so many of the kids I taught on there. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so the conversations I have with them are, are different. It might be eBay if they need help, but not so much there, but mm -hmm. I'm on Instagram under Chiching King and I'm mm -hmm. on YouTube under Chiching King. Um, still learning how to do both of them and mm -hmm. uh, working hard at it. So uh, I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Scott, for joining us. We really yes. appreciate you coming. This has been a very fast one hour. And we has really it been an hour? It. Yeah. Yeah, it flew by. <laughs> it flew Can right by. It? <laughs> so we thank you so much. Hopefully you hit that like button and mm -hmm. you all have a good night. All right. Bye. Bye.